Okay, so <clears throat> yes, I'm Eric Schweitz. I work at NVIDIA and I'm presenting an MLIR dialect for high level optimization of Fortran. Um, <clears throat> so let's unpack that. Uh, Fortran, um, that's probably a language you would think your great uncle Albert used to program his um, <coughs> steam-driven uh, abacus, but um, it's actually important today as well. Uh, <coughs> it's, you know, the world's first high-level programming language. Um, it's still used in physical systems, um, a lot of modeling applications, such as weather modeling, climate models, um, and it's still an active language. There was a Fortran standard release last year, and uh, the Flang project is uh, is uh, driving to uh, create a, a compiler that will uh, compile Fortran 2018. <coughs> um, so what this talk is about is the Fortran IR, which is the middle end, or the middle part here shown in a dark gray color. Um, it's a high level Fortran IR. It's built on top of MLIR. Uh, uses MLIR as the infrastructure. Um, and we want a common path from the parsing and uh, semantics analysis or syntax to uh, doing static analysis and uh, code gen. So our you know, a common path to our optimizer, I guess. Um, the Fortran IR is intended to, um, to be a, a higher level IR to, to lower the semantics gap between Fortran itself and, um, and uh, rather than dropping straight to like LLVM or a, a low level IR. Um, <clears throat> so, point there being that we want to write Fortran aware optimizations. Uh, and it also lets us separate concerns. So the, for, the front end, our F18 project can focus on parsing and constraints checking. And the, the middle end will focus on optimis, optimizing those computations. Um, <clears throat> So MLIR is the multi-level IR. Uh, again, we're using that as our infrastructure. It's uh, actively being developed. It's fairly new from TensorFlow. Uh, it's, it's great. Um, we have been very productive by using it and leveraging it. Um, it's been it was just approved for inclusion into the LLVM projects. Um, a little bit about MLIR, it's extensible. Um, users can write their own dialect, which is kind of like a namespace where you can define your own types. Um, you can define your own operations, uh, your own conversions between dialects, um, optimization passes, of course. Uh, and it, this lets you build um, a dialect for Fortran in our case, and also mix it with uh, dialects such as the affine dialect, which is, um, you know, let's, is another representation that uh, provides optimization opportunities. Um, <clears throat> it's L or MLIR is similar to LLVMIR. In some ways, it has modules, functions, Functions contain basic blocks or control flow graphs. Those basic blocks can contain operations which interact with each other through SSA values. Everything's strongly typed. Uh, so this is an example of MLIR and the syntax from their language reference. Uh, as you can see, the syntax is a little different than MLIR. There's like postfix. Um, types, which is a little different. Um, attributes are another feature that's a little different than ML or LLVMIR. Um, 
that just lets you tag certain operations with information that may be useful for an optimizer or what have you. Uh, and <coughs> so uh, Fortran IR, our, again, our main goal in creating Fortran IR is optimizing Fortran programs at, at a semantic level where we don't lose um, what the Fortran program's doing. Uh, one strength of Fortran is the array computations. Um, this also meshes well with MLIR, uh, which is also interested in doing computations on arrays from the TensorFlow domain. Um, but in Fortran, arrays are multidimensional. Um, you can cast the array into different index spaces fairly easily. And there's operations that work um, on expressions which are arrays themselves, so element by element computations. Um, there's also dynamic objects in Fortran where uh, you, you may not know a type until runtime, so you have parametric runtime types. Uh, the layout of uh, derived types could be deferred until runtime. Um, one nice thing about Fortran is there's a very restricted aliasing model. Uh, so we'll get to that in a moment. Um, there's also in modern Fortran, there's object-oriented features such as uh, single inheritance, virtual dispatch, uh, and type safe downcasting. Uh, there's some interesting features as far as control flow. Uh, we can have um, internal subprograms which are subprograms that have can freely reference freely reference uh, variables in uh, their host subprogram. So uh, it's kind of a backdoor way to get into uh, the parent subprogram. Uh, there's also ways to write unordered loops, so we don't know what order the iterations actually happen. Um, Subroutines can have multiple entry points, and there's uh, a feature where a return from a sub program actually goes to another location, so a return to sort of feature. Um, so we want to expose this sort of information in uh, fur. Um, specifically, we want to know, you know, what what are the loops and what are the array structures so we can optimize and apply loop transformations. Um, we want to expose the Fortran entities, which I'll call objects, um, so we can optimize those and, and any object or, yeah, object-oriented programming loop features uh, as well. So, <coughs> sort of, restate that um, in the context of what FUR gives us. Um, FUR gives us a, uh, we've defined a type system which smooths over the distinctions between type and attribute in Fortran. So Fortran types are pretty simple and you modify those with attributes to, to get something that would be more classically uh, like an array type. Um, We've also defined some operations uh, because Fortran is imperative uh, to ease our transition into SSA form, so a memory SSA to register SSA support. Um, in old Fortran, everything was passed by reference, so uh, uh, that means like if you're passing an array, you just pass a pointer to the array, right? Um, in more modern Fortran, uh, these actually, uh, these objects can actually be uh, passed by descriptor, which means there's more information about how that object should be accessed. Um, so, you know, it's upper bounds, lower bounds, how many dimensions it has can be passed. 
So this is abstracted in FUR as box types, and uh, the information gets inboxed and unboxed as we as we go and, and need to access the information contained in the box. Um, <clears throat> there's also support for um, record types, including um, deferred fields. So we, in Fortran, it's possible to define a, a de derived type that the fields can be optimized as far as their order. Um, the field size may not be known until runtime. So, so we need ways to describe that. And the, also length parameters is a, a similar concept, but that's associated with the, the derived type itself. Um, and again, we have object-oriented features, so we want dispatch and dispatch tables to handle that. And uh, uh, some loop abstractions, so a high-level loop and conditional where. Uh, so now I'd like to walk through some example optimizations that we have uh, mocked up here. First, uh, loop transformations and uh, specifically vectorization. So, so these are just pseudocode, don't look too close. Um, <coughs> but this example is supposed to be convolution. Um, F, F and G are the input vectors and R is an output vector. Uh, we, know, we notice there's a doubly nested loop to compute the convolution on these vectors. Uh, so when we translate that to fur, uh, the code would look something like this. A lot of the code's omitted because it, it's kind of verbose and wouldn't fit on the screen. But if you notice, F and G in purple are box types. So we're boxing up the, uh, the references to those are vectors uh, and passing extra information, and then R as well. Uh, and this structure also contains the two loops. So inside the loops, we're uh, computing the offset to load, from, to load F from, and as well as G, and do our calculations and store back to R. Uh, in our hypothetical uh, vectorization pass, uh, the code might be transformed in MLIR to, to look something like this. Uh, the, the pseudo instructions and quotation marks are, could be some other dialect. Uh, they're not actually for instructions. Um, so this just unrolls the, or vectorizes the inner loop by uh, four. And uh, it's a little simpler syntax. So the next example is array copy elimination. Uh, this again is some Fortran uh, subroutine Two is calling subroutine one, S1. Um, the original array is X and it has 100 elements um, and we're passing to S1, however, uh, a sliced version of X, so every fourth element for 25 elements. Uh, our naive uh, compiler may choose to pack those 25 elements into a new array, a new vector. Um, so you know, we're allocating a new array, copying the, the original data into it, uh, and then doing the inbox operation and calling S1. Uh, of course, we know that we probably don't want to do that copy. <coughs> so we get rid of that and uh, do a little rewrite, we can pass um, the dimension information, which is uh, exactly like the Fortran uh, slice operation. So one to 100, stride by four, and we embed that in the box and pass that to S1 and get rid of the copy. 
again, this you know takes some Fortran awareness to, to know we can do this. Uh, call specialization is our third example. Here we have uh, a call to S1 again. S1 is, takes a assume shape argument, uh, and it's just uh, it knows somehow that that ar array or vector has ten elements and is going to operate on those ten elements. So when we lower that to um, fur. It's, we're gonna have an inbox operation to, to pass all the information to S1. And of course, in S1, we can tell that we don't, didn't really use any information out of the box because we already knew the bounds were one to 10. So we can specialize this call to get rid of the inbox operation um, and just pass as a bare reference to X since it had to be 1 to 10. And our final optimization, devirtualization. So it's a good thing to do for object-oriented programs. Um, here, some Fortran where we have a type T and it's extended by the type U. Uh, type U has a type bound procedure method, which is type bound to U method, which is the actual subroutine that will be called. Uh, and then we're calling that method UV percent method. So the percent's Fortran fancy way of writing a dot. <coughs> um, when we lower that to fur, we have uh, a dispatch table, which is binds the, the method name to the symbol U method. Um, and then we have a dis dispatch operation that dispatches on the name method. Uh, and because uh, UV has type U, it would look up in the dispatch table, find that we're really calling U method, uh, just like any other virtual call, um, and call that. Uh, so to devirtualize, we've we've set up this example obviously to um, have exactly precisely the type U, so we don't really need to go through the dispatch table, and we just would rewrite the the dispatch to a direct call. So. Uh, Fur is a dialect of MLIR. It's uh, the middle layer. It sits between um, semantics checking and LLVM. Um, our, our goal in Fur to, so far is to define just a minimalist set of operations and types so uh, that we can perform these optimizations. We want to be optimization driven and not try to define a dialect that does everything. Um, so uh, all the optimizations I've presented here take Fortran concepts and utilize those to optimize the code. Um, again, MLIR has been great. Um, we were able to, to uh, take what we were, were building by hand uh, and just port a lot of the concepts we had there straight into MLIR, use table gen, uh, generate the code. So it's, it's easy to use, a very extensible framework. Um, it's easy to write the pretty printers and parsers. Um, it comes with the LLVM code gen, so it's kind of a no-brainer in that sense. Um, and uh, we, we're planning to reuse uh, some of their optimizations, so they're also interested in doing uh, optimizations on arrays, so loop transformations is an obvious uh, overlap, and we can probably use their inliner as well, maybe tailored toward, towards some Fortran uh, heuristics. So I think 
guess that was it for me. We have time for some questions. Um, thanks for the presentation. I just wanted to ask, on one of your um, code example slides, you were using standard operations for arithmetic, let's say uh, subtracting or adding indices, yes. but you weren't using uh, standard for loops and re-implement re-implemented your own uh, FIR loop, or you were not using memrefs, and you had your own FIR ref. Is there right. any benefit of using uh, your own operation for the same purpose? Um, so there's a couple different answers. So I started this work before um, MLIR had loops. Um, so yes, there's some overlap there. Um, and yes, there is some advantage to having uh, first class Fortran concepts. So um, like the Fortran intrinsics, intrinsic types we have modeled in uh, FUR. Um, now they lower into standard types typically, especially like integers, um, but it may be useful for different front ends to, to be able to distinguish um, say integer kind 10 and uh, integer kind 11, which might map to the same integer type in the standard dialect. Okay. Thanks. Hey, so in MLR, there's a dialect called affine. Yes. So um, have you looked into the affine dialect and see if there's any overlap between FRR and uh, affine? Um, yes, I believe there is, and um, in fact, in our earlier version of looking at FUR, um, we had discussed uh, doing our own affine sort of model. Um, so yes, it meshes very well. Uh, we haven't got there yet as far as lowering code into the MLIR affine dialect, but, but we're definitely looking at that. Hi. Um, might be a somewhat of a trivial question, but um, in your copy elimination example, um, I wasn't sure how the first function is able to know that it needs to skip like or read every four elements for the incoming array without uh, some sort of intraprocedural opt. I mean, in the the called function. Yeah, the called function. That's right. Yeah. The well. So if we did that optimization, the the called function would need to know or need to access that box information and um, realize that the stride was was not one and uh, you know generate the right access pattern. I see. So, so the so the the called function would actually need to read the stride dynamically. Right. I see. Okay. Thank you. Exactly. Um, I was wondering um, how much of this sort of uh, IR, so you've got like uh, OOP and stuff, how much of that could you sort of reuse for like um, having a, a Clang intermediate, you no know, CIL or other sort of high level front ends and just sort of uh, common infrastructure? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't been thinking about C at all, so. Uh. <laughs> It's so just, yeah, just maybe some of it. I I doubt a lot of it because it, it's very Fortran centric, right? Mm -hmm. We want to capture Fortran things. So, um, but, like, but things like the example. dispatch table, um, you know, that would appear in C plus plus as well. It, it's in SIL. So, All right. so some of those concepts would transfer, but maybe not. Obviously, not all of them, but yeah. Yeah, not the whole dialect, right? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, just a question that's not specific to the MLIR use, but to Flang in general. So, what's the status of Flang from a perspective of when when do you think it will be ready for use as a sort of production Fortran compiler? <laughs> that's an excellent question. Um, <laughs> so, 
the, there is a flang, it's, we call it old flang, um, so that, that's out there. Um, there's a new flang, and that's the F-18 front end. Um, so parsing's done with that. Um, semantic analysis is a train in motion. Um, it's, it's probably, you know, mostly done, I would say. Um, and then uh, what we're working on, FIR, uh, is, you know, we, we have a definition and we're working to uh, create the lowering bridge and the bridge to LLVM IR, uh, but that, that's not done yet. So, uh, as far as schedules, uh, I think my boss is around here somewhere. <laughs> Do we have any further questions? All right, well, let's thank the speaker.